All right, this will be back quiz number one, first back quiz. And first question is gonna have a, a part A and a part B, right? So we're gonna do one A, one B here. So for one A, I want you to identify this muscle here. That'll be one A, identify that muscle. Then we're gonna take that muscle and we're going to reflect it out of the way. And 1B is to identify this muscle here that I'm outlining that we just uncovered. So you can see I can get moving it there a little bit, kind of get under it, this guy right here. Okay, so 1A, identify this muscle. 1B, we move 1A out of the way, identify that muscle there. That's 1A, 1B. Number two, we're gonna move up a little bit. So we're gonna now come up here. We're gonna take this muscle here and we're gonna reflect it like that. Then we're gonna take these two muscles here and we're gonna reflect those. And I want you to identify this next muscle right here that we uncover right there. That's number two. Then for number three, I want you to tell me what is the functional relationship between 1B that we identified down here and number two that you just identified there. So what's the functional relationship between this muscle and that muscle there? Number four, we are going to put these two muscles back like that. And I'm just going to move this down into place. So kind of move the shoulder back down, something like that there. And let me grab this. And for next one, we want to identify that muscle right there. That one there. That was number four. For number five, we're gonna have a part A, part B. So let me just move this back into place again. So I'm gonna just move the shoulder and the scapula back into place here. And right here, we have two muscles. We have two muscles here. I'm gonna kind of put the probe in between those two there. So for 5A, I want you to identify the one that was above the probe right there, okay? And for 5B, identify the one that's below the probe down there. So again, the probe is right in between two muscles here. This is A, that's B. Like that. <clears throat> Number six, we're gonna be still up in this area. So we're gonna re reflect those two we just asked about. Let's get those guys out of the way. And then we're gonna reflect that one that we asked before. Let's get that one out of the way there. Then we're going to take these two muscles here. These are the ones that are kind of going up in this direction. These two guys, we're gonna reflect that. Let's get that off of there. And now I'm realizing we need to be on the other side. Sorry, let's switch Go over there. I'm gonna show you the same thing on the other side. I just don't have that stuff done here. Let's put all that back. All right, same thing. So let's get this guy out of the way. Let's take those two that we asked about out of the way. Here was that one we asked about before. Let's get that out of there. Then we got two muscles here that we're gonna reflect like that. Get that out of there. Then we are going to take this muscle here and we're going to reflect that, that up out of the way. And we're going to uncover this muscle here. So I want you to identify this muscle right there. Okay, that is 6A, 6A. 
identify this muscle here. And then for 6B, if we cut this muscle out of the way, what muscle would we uncover underneath of there? So it's one that we did not get a visual on. This is a muscle that we did not have a visual on, but it would be located deep to this muscle here. That would be 6B. Number seven, same area. We're going to put this muscle that we moved out of the way back in place there, okay? And I want you to identify that muscle, this whole thing right there. For number eight, we're gonna be in the same area. Now we're gonna move this guy back out of the way. Like that, that was the one you just identified. So we're gonna move that. And up in this area here, so up in here, we have four muscles. Let me see if I can make a little bit more space here. Okay. So up in this area, we had four muscles. We have two right here, and then we got two right there. Out of these, this is gonna be, let's see here. This is gonna be 8A and 8B. 8A and 8B. I want you to identify these two muscles here, this one being A and that one there being B. So this is 8A and that is 8B right there, A, B. All right, for the next couple, I'm gonna show you a movement, all right? Yeah, so you can put it on me here, right? I'm gonna demonstrate a movement. So for number nine, I want you to, I'm gonna kind of do this from the side. So I'm gonna start anatomical position, okay? Uh, or, Gonna begin here. So the first, the beginning of the movement will be me being like this. Start here and here. All right. Begin like this and like that. All right. So name that movement. Then for let's see here. So that was nine. Then for the next four. All right. So 10, 11, 12, 13. All right. The next four. I want you to name four movements that neutralize while we're doing that movement I just showed you. So again, from start here and there. So when we're doing that movement, I want you to name four movements that would neutralize while we perform that movement. That would be for 10, 11, 12, 13. That's it. All right, so pause. Go over your answers, and then as soon as you're ready, you can unpause and we'll, we'll go over all the answers. All right? Okay, let's go over the answers. Um, all right, so the first one, we had a part A, part B. So we had 1A was this muscle here, and that was gonna be latissimus dorsi. Then we reflected re latissimus dorsi, and 1B was this muscle here, which was gonna be serratus posterior inferior. Then we move on to number two, and we're gonna take trapezius out of the way, like that. Then we're gonna take rhomboid major and minor out of the way. And then the next muscle down, I'm sorry, we got something just folded up there, there we go. The next muscle that we get to, this guy here, is gonna be serratus posterior superior. That was number two. Then number three was to give me the functional relationship between number two and number 1B, so between serratus posterior superior and serratus posterior inferior, and the functional relationship between those two is gonna be antagonistic. Then number four, if I can find it, was up here. So for number four, we put rhomboid major and minor back in place, and then I kinda moved the scapula and the shoulder kinda back into place here. So it's Hold that out of the way like that and it was 
to identify this muscle that we're seeing there, and that's gonna be levator scapulae, that one that I'm moving there, levator scapulae. Then number five, that was part A, part B. So we're gonna take these two guys and move them back into place. So we kind of grab these guys, I move the scapula and the shoulder back like that. And then we put the probe here and we split this muscle into its two parts. So first part was rhomboid minor up here. That was part A. Part B down here was rhomboid major. It was rhomboid minor, rhomboid major. And we had the probe kind of right in between those two there. Then number six was in two parts. So we went up here. Now we're gonna move rhomboid major and minor out of the way. We're gonna move serratus posterior superior out of the way. Then we come down to the splenius capitis and cervicus muscles. Oh, I'm doing the same exact thing I did during the quiz. We gotta go to the other side, sorry. <laughs> same exact thing I did over there because I don't have this one completely dissected out. So let's go to this side. Let's put this stuff back, just get kind of back where we were. All right, so we were just doing rhomboid major minor. We're gonna reflect those two. Then we reflect serratus posterior superior. Get that out of the way. Then we come down to splenius capitis and cervicus. We're gonna reflect those two. Then we uncover semispinalis. We're gonna reflect that one. So it's a long way down to go. Then we uncover this area. So the next one, we had was to identify multifidus. I think that was, let me just check the number, I think it's six, right? Yeah, 6A. Six 6A six is multifidus here. And then for 6B, I said, if we were to cut multifidus out of the way, what muscle would we expose? It would be rotatories, which would be located deep to multifidus. Now that's one that we did not see a picture of, but you do wanna know where it would be, and it would be located deep to multifidus there. Next one, number seven, was to recover up multifidus. So we're gonna take this muscle here, put it back in place, and we wanna know what muscle here would sit on top of multifidus, and that would be semispinalis. That's seven. Then number eight was two parts, right? So we gonna, we're gonna retake semispinalis out of the way. So we're gonna reflect semispinalis. And then we were looking deep down into this part here. So let me hold semispinalis out of the way a little bit more. And we had four muscles here. We had these two next to each other there, and we had these two next to each other there. And this one was to identify these two here. So we had a part A, 8A was this one, that was rectus capitis posterior major. And then 8B was this one over here, which is rectus capitis posterior minor, right? So A was major, B was minor there. Right, and then, okay, and then we went to the movement. So on me here was to show you the movement, right? So again, we started like this and we ended like this. Now, the movement is gonna be extension of the spine. You could have just said extension of the spine. If you wanted to pick a part of the spine, that's fine too. So if you said extension of the cervical spine, extension of the lumbar spine, any one of those things, perfectly fine. As long as you have extension of the spine in there, you're good, right? Then we wanted to know while we're doing extension of the spine like that, right? We want four movements that neutralize. So, Couple things, you have to know that to do extension, we needed a bilateral contraction of one of our spinal muscles. So you could have said a bilateral contraction of longissimus, spinalis, rotatories, multifidus, it does not matter, right? Bilateral contraction of any one of those muscles would cause us to do extension. When we have a bilateral contraction, then what we're neutralizing are the unilateral movements. So. Um, in order to do extension, I have to have the lateral flexions neutralized. So you can say lateral flexion to the right, lateral flexion to the left, that would be two movements. And I also need to have the rotations neutralized as well. So you could say rotation of the spine to the right, rotation of the spine to the left. All of those things would cancel out 
or neutralized if we were doing extension of the spine. So it's gonna be right and left lateral flexion, that's two of the movements, and right and left rotation of the spine, that would be the other two movements. So that would be for uh, 10, 11, 12, and 13. It does not matter the order that you put them, but those are the four movements that you would want, okay?